Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some questions. This week, Blizzard announced that they are lowering the Great Vault requirement for the third option. So it will only require eight raid bosses killed to get your third raid boss option down from nine, eight keys down from 10 for the third mythic plus slot, and less honor from rated PvP for the third PvP slot also. This makes plenty of sense, especially given that on the first week of raid there will only be eight bosses available, and this should help people that are trying to grind out that third slot for the most chances at tier pieces possible, you know, a little bit of a break. Xerath Mortis launched this week, that did happen, and we already have our first hotfix to make the repeatable treasures spawn more often. So here is the list of them, you should see these a little bit more when you are out and about in Xerath Mortis. They do seem worth picking up if you see one and you can be bothered. Some of them are tricky to get to though, so my feeling is that I will loot treasures later when I can fly for the most part. You only gotta loot five of the hidden secret treasures for the flying unlock requirement, so I did my five and then the rest of them can wait. And speaking of the new zone, I've put together a couple of Xerath Mortis tips uh, that we've gleaned from our first week. So first up, the Shardhide Whistle toy from Corthia does work in Xerath Mortis along with the rest of the Shadowlands. It is still as useful as ever for getting to a nearby rare in time to tag it before it dies, and just much faster than mount speed and a pretty short cooldown, so I have continued to keep my Shardhide Whistle on my hotbar, and if you never played Corthia, it's probably worth going back to get it. It's a very fast treasure to get. My Corthia Tips video has a little section on it, and I will link that below. Xerath Mortis tip number two is to keep a little stash of goblin gliders on you if you like. They are awesome for getting around in Xerath Mortis because of like the basin shaped nature of the zone. A lot of the dailies and the world quests that we're doing are kind of along the edges up on mountains and then you generally speaking need to get back to the center after that. So I've just been kind of running up the mountain doing whatever I need to do up there and then sailing on down with the glider to get to where I'm going faster. Um, these are consumed so it's not completely free but they're crafted by engineers. You can buy them on the auction house. It's not too bad to have a few of them. I'd be lying if I told you I did it every time just because I'm a priest. I can levitate. It's not as fast but I'm cheap. <laughs> Third tip, a bit of an obvious one, but just in case you missed it, there is a Forge of Bonds at Haven in case you want to change anything about your conduit setup. You do not need to go all the way back to your Covenant Hall. You have a Forge of Bonds for conduit adjustments at Haven, and you also at Haven have a place to deposit anima. There should be an NPC from your Covenant by the little lake in the middle that can take your anima and deposit it for you, so there's no need to go all the way back to your Covenant Hall for those things. I've been deeply appreciating how the anima from Xerath Mortis is just in one type of item that you can just stack up real high as opposed to like a bunch of different themed ones, but it's still nice to be able to deposit it without having to go all the way home. Number four, if you are struggling with some of these cipher cache puzzles, just be informed that there are weak auras and add-ons that can help you with that. Um, I haven't downloaded any of them myself because I usually just get my Poke Poke to break the thing because it makes me feel good. Poke Poke energy grows back and I'm not really using it for anything else so I just have them smash it. But if you do want to save the Poke Poke energy and you're not jiving with the puzzles, there are add-ons and stuff that you can get that can help you with them. Most of them I found that I can do fine, but the Mazonic cache that has the big light grid that you toggle, I can't do it for the life of me. I tried for far longer than I should have, and I have come to decide that my brain's just not friends with that one. And then in my life this week, I am putting together raid guides, and that's all I'm doing. My current gold total when I checked this morning was at 628k, but I haven't really been doing any gold farming aside from just continuing to post my slowly dwindling inventory of things to sell. Um, I'm doing my dailies out in Xerath Mortis because I want to get my rep as fast as possible, but I find that I can kind of crank those out in like 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour if I get lost, and then I can be done for the day, which works for me right now. <laughs> And then James wants to know, how hard do you think dealing with Corthia will be moving forward, such as doing the rares for mounts, etc.? So if you get yourself some of that 226 item level gear from Xerath Mortis, you can just buy it with anima at the anima gear vendor at Haven um, very early in the unlock. And you can get plenty of anima from both Corthia and Xerath Mortis. Um, get yourself a set of 226 stuff if it's better for you. And that should be more than enough for you to be able to solo the rares, the mount rares that are out in Corthia. Um, I also assume people are going to continue doing those because people are still doing FAMU. People are still doing... Rust Feather. If it drops a mount, there will always be some interest. I wouldn't worry too much about getting stuck out there. And Tongue wants to know what's the schedule for Campaign Chapters 2 Unlock? 
So I couldn't find whatever the official thing from Blizzard was if they said a thing, but I googled it and Icy Veins was saying that we get Chapter 4 in two weeks starting on March 8th, so not the week of the Raid Unlock, but one week following we get our next campaign chapter, and then Chapter 5 the week following, which unlocks Flying, and that would be the week of March the 15th, so the fourth week of Patch is when the Flying Unlock would come in. I used to think that it was going to be the second week, but apparently not. Um, I don't mind being on the ground in Xerath Mortis all that much, although I think it's because I know I'm getting flying soon, so anything that looks too irritating to do without flying, I'm just procrastinating on that until later. And that's been my week, thank you for watching. The first eight raid guides should be up before the raid opens on March the 1st, so keep an eye out for that. The last three will take longer because I need to see those fights on live servers, and that's gonna be contingent on me getting into a group and, you know, like... We'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Pop any questions for the video in the comments, include the word question, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.